Alright, I was just running my Bobcat skid steer and the one motion on the bucket controls, it stopped working. So I can tilt the bucket up, but I can't tilt it back down. So let's see if we can get that working again. So you can see the controls. So this one here is working fine. This one here that controls the tilt of the bucket does nothing when you move it that direction. When you move it that way, you can hear that it tries to work. Electronics when it should be pilot controls like every other machine. Um, so last time I had an issue with it, it was the plug in here, but all right, so I'm kind of leaning towards it being this controller in here. Let's see if we can test that. All right, so with the Bobcat, you don't even need to run it to tell if this is working or not. So you can hear when I move this this way, you can hear the solenoid moving. When I move it this way, nothing. On this side, working fine. All right, the way these work is with electronics. So this plug here, it's got three wires in it is what sends the signal from this thing down to the computer to make this thing work. So I got an idea. I'm going to try plugging this joystick into this side to see if it's a problem with the joystick. Okay, so now I have these joysticks plugged into each other so this stick will control this motion and you know they're switched around so this test is going to tell if there's a problem with the joystick so before when this joystick was moved the one direction it wasn't working the electronic thing that makes it move so now we'll test it okay we hear it that direction so we're listening for it that's working and that's also working so now we know that this joystick works fine. Let's go to this side. Okay, I can hear that moving. Then we go this way. Nothing. All right, so maybe the problem is with the actuator itself. So this can be put back to normal and then we'll open up the cab. All right, let's test if it's the actual solenoid itself. Okay, so that's those black components down in there, which control the bucket. And there's two of them. And they're the same thing. So what you can actually do to, to troubleshoot this is unplug one and plug it into the other. You know, just switch the plugs around. Okay, so that so let's plug this one into here. And plug this one into here. All right, let's try that. All 
right, well, since now I can tilt the bucket, but I cannot put the boom up and down, I know that the actuators are good. So the actuators are good, and these controllers are good. So that means it's an electrical problem somewhere. I can plug these back into each other because we know the actuator's fine. Now, looking for broken wires, you know, usually in an automotive application, you know, they'll get a little nick in it and then some road salt will get in it and uh, corrode it right out. And what you'll be looking for is like a greenish dust. All right, so with the cab open and the key on, you can hear. So that side's working fine. This side, that way's fine. Nothing this way. The point I'm at now, I've had to throw error codes a few times, but I never, I never read the codes. And I cannot get the thing to throw a code again. All right, after speaking with Bobcat, they said that it's either a broken wire or a problem with the uh, computer or controller that's under this plate. So I'm going to take this plate off and try to get to it. So there's the wires plugging it in, and it's that thing up in there. All right, so let me try to unbolt it to get to it. I think these bolts hold it up. All right, so here it is here. Well, nothing serviceable about this thing. Just a circuit board cast in, uh, you know, like hard plastic stuff to waterproof it. All right, well, let's, what I can do is look for broken wires. Okay, I'm gonna unplug this. Let me just wash these plugs of air. I'm just going to mark this so I know which way to plug these in. Cuz these are this is the the connector for the um you know the actual actuators. All right, got it freed. All right, with this computer pulled out of the machine it's a lot easier to see what's going on here the I looked at this for a while I don't see any issues with any of these wires you know what you'd want to look for is a section of insulation you know maybe with a cut in it and then what you'd see is that little cut would turn the wire into green powder you know all these wires look fine there's nothing I can do in there um, all right, as far as connectors, so this looks like power power going into it with these two pins, red and black. These are the output wires to the actuators. Now, the other thing you want to look for, too, is if any of these pins, you know, you push on them, pull on them, sometimes one of these wires will just pull out of these connectors. So I don't see any of that. This connector here, this is the one that goes to the joysticks. All right, this here, this is the side with the problem. Let me open that back up. I'm gonna test these three wires for continuity to this thing. 
All right, so what I mean by continuity, so you use one of these multimeters and you set it to right here where it's gonna beep. So when we have a connection between these, the thing beeps. All right, so I'm gonna test this. All right, so one of these wires should have continuity down here on this connector, which there it is right there. All right, we know that one's good. Let's try this middle pin. Try the last one. And there it is right there. All right, so all of these are making connection. All right, I'm pretty confident the problem is with this thing. So I just ordered a new one from Bobcat. It was 1400 bucks. Ah. Of course, it's completely different. All right, here we are a week later, and this is what I got. So it looks the same. That's the same. All right, this looks good. Why does this look like it's used? All right, let's get this installed. All right, I got my dad helping me here. All right, so either hold this up in here, or just put these bolts in. What would you rather do? All right. All right, try to start it. All right, we got that one started. All right, all right I think they're all started. You don't need to hold it anymore. Thank you. You're welcome. Two. Now these ones labeled. Was these? Well, I guess I got a 50-50 shot. Hang on. Oh, they're color coded. Hang on, are the colors? All right, I don't have to guess here. See, we got here's one for green. Here's one for pink. So I had marked. Here's green. There's green on this one, and this has my mark on it. So I can attach that to this connector here, which is also marked. All right, that's all plugged in. All right, the other thing I got here, this connector here, it's missing this pin retainer. So let me try to put that in. All right, that looks much better. And for anyone questioning that this may have been the problem in the first place, I am convinced it's not because two reasons. One, when I had the test leads hooked up to this, when I was switching the controllers back and forth, that was definitely making good connection with these pins. And the other way is as soon as one of these pins loses contact, it immediately throws an error code.
All right, before we put this thing 100% back together, let's test it first. Okay, key on, safety bar down, unlock button pushed. We're listening to see if these work. So here's the side that worked. And that sounds fine. Now here's the bad side. Okay, you can hear it working. Great, let's put it all back together. Every time I use this ratchet, people are always ask me where it came from. This came from Tractor Supply. I bought a bunch of them because this thing, these were super cheap. Right, that's probably fixed. Let's go test it. That warm up for a while. Well, it worked for about 30 seconds. All right, so this is what we got going on. It was working fine. Then all of a sudden you hear a beep from over here and then that light comes on in the machine. You got nothing. And the only way to fix that, you shut it off, start it back up, now unlock it. try to do some work with this thing. See, it works fine and then it stops working.
All right, so I've been driving this thing around a good 15 minutes now, moving the bucket, and I can't get it to recreate that problem again. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to kind of end this video here, even though the thing's not completely fixed, because I'm getting a little frustrated with this thing at this point. The next step to dealing with diagnosing that is, I never did it, but when that error code comes on, what you do is you hold down the green button and then it blinks a code that you read on that display and then with that code you're supposed to be able to diagnose the problem further so I'll probably do that if the problem persists the one Bobcat dealer I've been working with is extremely helpful over the phone so that's nice but this was a pretty annoying thing to happen because this thing was working perfectly fine and then it just all of a sudden stopped working and then this part you know after shipping and tax that was 1500 bucks for the new one so i'm pretty much done with bobcat they've the two bobcats i have this year they've been broken more than they've worked and that's just you, you know you're not making any money when the equipment's broken the whole time so I'm definitely looking to, I've been looking at Takuchis. Everyone keeps saying how great they are. You know, one of my friends who works at a rental place where they're sending out machines constantly to all different kinds of operators who necessarily don't care about them. He says the Takuchis, he says they're animals and they don't come back broken. And the other thing I'm kind of realizing here, I, I know this is going to annoy some people, but Generally, the machines that are made in Japan work perfectly. And if things that are made anywhere else, in my experience, have been pretty terrible. You know, for example, this is a machine made in Japan. And this is the machine I probably, out of all the machines I have, I've put the most hours on this one, probably even by far. And I've had this thing seven years now, and it almost never breaks i mean it's so rare that i ever have to do anything to this thing and it's super strong you know this is just a very pleasant machine to operate that's why i just picked this one up as well i mean i saw this for sale and a lot of people would be turned off by it you know because these yanmars they're very old and they're gray market machines so it's they say oh it's harder to get parts for it but you don't need parts for these things they just don't break even this one you know it's got almost 9,000 hours on it. So I'm definitely looking at Yanmar skid steers or Takuchi skid steers or or if anyone else has any recommendations for you know good skid steers, preferably that are made in Japan. And I don't want anything with any computers in them. But I'm not gonna buy any more machines that have computers. They just don't work. So my other Bobcat too, people have been asking, oh, where's your wheeled Bobcat? That broke this summer, the valve, the spool valve went bad in it, took the spool valve out, which was a nightmare job, sent it out to get it rebuilt. I put it back in and it doesn't work. I mean, it kind of works, but it doesn't. And I've been, you know, talking to the guy about diagnosing it. He says he's going to come over, but he's not showing up. So, um, you know, both these Bobcats, they're generally broken more than they work. I'm just going to sell them both. So now this machine, when this thing works, I do really like it. It does always do what you want to do. You know, one thing I like about it, it's got these nice wide tracks on it. And a lot of the Takuchis, the tracks are really narrow. And I don't want one with narrow tracks. I feel like it will, won't work as well. So um, so a lot of the, a lot of them that I've been seeing, you know, aren't quite what I want. You know, I'm sure a lot of the people who watch my videos probably watch Let's Dig too. He's got a really nice Takuchi skid steer. So I'm kind of looking for like that same model. All right, so just to end this video on a funnier note, um, I was back here moving stuff around for no reason. And this rock here, when I was about seven or eight years old, I used to have a tree fort. And this rock, I used to, and I would use this come along. And I used to put the come along up in a tree and, and winch this rock up into the air all the time and then drop it on stuff. And I always thought that was so much fun. You know, that rock probably weighs at least three or four hundred pounds. And being like a, I remember being like a seven year old kid and having this rock like hanging 10 feet in the air and my friends thinking I was crazy or something. But that was always so much fun. And, and then you could, then I would tie ropes around this rock 
and then put the come along down on the lower end so I could ride the rock and winch myself up in the air. It was always so much fun. I used to have a lot of fun with that come along like it was a toy or something. Alright, well that's kind of the end of this video. So um, I'll throw an update on this bobcat in a future video or something. But as it is now, the thing does work. And like I said, I was driving around for a while. Couldn't get it to recreate that problem. So maybe it's fixed. Maybe not, but you know, even when it has that problem, all you got to do is shut it off and turn it back on again. If any Bobcat technicians are watching this and have any advice on how to maybe further troubleshoot this too, feel free to leave a comment on this video with advice. <laughs>